Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So ever since Canelo Alvarez lost to Dimitri Bivol, he's been fighting against the weakest opposition. He was a 1,600 minus favorite in the Edgar Belanga fight, which is a reason why a lot of people are saying it's a victory for Belanga that he even went 12 rounds because Berlanga was the weakest opposition that Canelo Alvarez faced in his last six fights. So the question that a lot of fans have been asking is, if he's not gonna fight against Crawford, if he's not gonna fight against David Benavidez, who can he possibly fight? And Canelo Alvarez is saying that he's interested in fighting against Dimitri Bivol in a rematch. According to ESPN's Mike Coppinger, who had a conversation with Canelo. But we can't really take this too serious because we don't know how Mike Coppinger asked the question. We don't know exactly what Canelo Alvarez said about the fight. All we know is that Mike Coppinger, he quoted that Canelo Alvarez is interested in fighting against Bivol in a rematch. I mean, the point is, Canelo, he could have mentioned Bivol's name in any context. And it also depends on what was the question that Mike Coppinger asked Canelo. Did Mike Coppinger say, who do you want to fight next? Now, if he did, and Canelo Alvarez said, I want to fight Bivol. That's who I want next. I want Bivol if he beats better BF. Now, if that's how it went down, then that would suggest that maybe Canelo really does want to fight Bivol in a rematch. Or was it a scenario where Mike Coppinger, he was the one that just brought up Bivol's name and Canelo just said, oh yeah, well, I'd be interested in that. I mean, I'll fight anybody. And if you've been watching boxing long enough, you know, usually when a fighter says, I'll fight anybody, it usually means they don't want to fight nobody. Or to be a little bit more specific, when a reporter asks a fighter, hey, do you want to fight that one guy who's been calling you out for three years? And they say, yeah, man, I'll fight anybody. That means they don't want to fight that guy in particular. Because the question wasn't, are you willing to fight anybody? The question was, are you going to fight David Benavidez, for example? Now, here is something that Canelo did say, according to uh, ESPN. This is what he said about the Better BF versus Bivol fight. He said he has the ability to beat Better BF. And then Canelo, he said he's only interested in Bivol if he wins, not Better BF. Better BF is a strong fighter. He's a good fighter, too. And it's going to be a hard fight. You see, if you have been paying attention closely, you'll notice Canelo Alvarez, he never wants to fight a skilled fighter who has power. You see, he doesn't want to fight Better BF. He talks about how Better BF is so strong, has a lot of power. That's the same reason he doesn't want to fight David Benavidez. Remember when he mentioned David Benavidez, he said, oh, all he's going to do is come in. You know, all he has to offer is an extra 25 pounds. The only time Canelo is willing to fight a guy with power is if that fighter is considered way past his prime, has a very weak defense, is not that skilled, or has a weak chin, or all of the above. By way of contrast, fighters like Floyd Mayweather, Terrence Crawford, Gervonta Tank Davis, they fight guys that are skilled with power all the time, not Canelo. Canelo claims he's willing to fight Bivol in a rematch, which we don't know how serious he really is, but he wants zero smoke with Better Biev if Better Biev were to win the fight. So I'm going to say this to my Mexican viewers right now. Didn't you guys tell me that Canelo Alvarez is just doing everything that Floyd Mayweather did? Floyd Mayweather moved up five weight classes and he took on the best, the hardest punchers in those weight classes and beat them. He fought Canelo, who was 15 pounds bigger than him and much younger than him. You got to think about this. Canelo, he really only moved up three weight classes when he even did go up to 175. Even though he started his career at 135, you can't include that because Canelo, he was only 15 years old, so he was still growing. Once he became a grown man, that's when he fought at his natural weight, which was 154. So really, he moved up from 154 to 168. And so far, he's been unsuccessful at winning a title at 175. With Canelo's style, as big and strong as he is, and if we listen to Mexican fans with them talking about Mexicans have so much heart and they're warriors, Canelo is supposed to be the guy moving up four or five weight classes and going after all of the biggest, strongest skilled fighters at the higher weight classes. Not Floyd. Let the Mexican fans tell it. Canelo's supposed to be doing that. So why isn't he doing what Floyd Mayweather did? I want to read what Bivol said. This is what Bivol said about Canelo Alvarez. He said, I need motivation and fight against him. It's not easy. And I already beat him at 175. Why should I fight him again? Well, let's try for his belt. But he doesn't want to fight at 168 and I don't care. 
This is funny because old media, they tried to coach right after Canelo lost to Bivol. Old media, they tried to coach Canelo into using the excuse that maybe the guy was just too big. You know, Bivol was too big. They kept kind of forcing Canelo to say it. And then Canelo, he adopted that excuse. Then every time Canelo talked, he was like, well, you know, it was 175. It wasn't my weight class, et cetera, et cetera. But now Bivol, he comes out and destroys that excuse by saying he only wants to fight Canelo Alvarez at his own weight class. And Canelo still turns down the fight because Canelo knows him losing had nothing to do with the weight class. And when Eddie Hearn told Canelo, it would not be smart for you to take the better BF rematch right away because if you lose back to back, your career might not survive. That means even Eddie Hearn knew all the excuses that Canelo Alvarez was using was nothing but an excuse. That was Eddie Hearn's way of just telling Canelo Alvarez that Bivol is better than you. So there's no reason to let him beat you twice when you could just take on much easier competition and keep making paydays. And this has always been the Canelo way. So I'll wrap this video up by saying this. Canelo Alvarez, he's going to look at all three of these opponents, David Benavidez, Crawford, and Bivol, and he's trying to obviously figure out which one do I have a better chance of beating. And if he comes to the conclusion that he doesn't have a chance of beating any of them, then he's going to go back to fighting the Berlangas, the Munguias, and the John Riders until he retires. And I'll tell you guys, for me, I don't even care. I don't even care anymore if Canelo Alvarez, if he fights good competition or not. This is the way he's going to be remembered. Years from now, when people think of Canelo's career, they're going to think about a fighter who had two losses on his record. He never avenged any of the losses. He tests positive for PEDs. Every time he stepped up in competition, he either lost or the fight ended in controversy. And once he realized he couldn't beat the best competition, he decided to end his career by just fighting the weakest opposition. The end. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.